welcome to uh, another episode of TVTF. I realise it's been a little while since the last one and I do apologise about that. To be fair, been on holiday, been a little bit busy, um, but I am back now. And I promise, promise that I will do uh, Turtle Talk and finish off uh, the last one for Raphael there. Kind of waiting for the Bebop and Rock City to come out as well. And possibly some other stuff, I don't know, uh, at this point. But that's not why we're here. The reason we're here is to see this guy. GDO, Asia exclusive, hotspot. Sorry, protector bot, hotspot. Yet another one of those situations where we have to mention what he is. Uh, we can't just say G1 hotspot, I'm afraid, uh, even though that's essentially what he is. Yet another use of the Inferno mold, the amazing Inferno mold. I really do love it. Uh, but so we'll get onto that in a second. First off, hotspot. Well, in comics and cartoon, the guy didn't actually do much. Um, sadly, the protector bots came way behind the aerial bots in Hasbro's priorities. Uh, much as did Bruticus at the time with Devastator and the Stunticons. Uh, Bruticus always came a bit behind. But even then, uh, you know, he got his own two-part episode. Whereas uh, the protector bots just popped up. They just appeared in the cartoon. Uh, they didn't really do much when they did appear in the cartoon. They sort of formed up. They got beaten or they did their job. And then they kind of went away. Um, there was a whole episode dedicated to first aid. Uh, but no full episode dedicated to Hotspot. Uh, they did get a lot more screen time in uh, the second season. Sorry, the third season. Uh, they appeared in the second season for the first time. Uh, and they, like I say, they didn't do much in season two. Season three did a bit more, but still very much support ca characters. Um, and definitely in the comics, the Marvel comics, support characters. Um, they appeared uh, in the After Death Saga, where Optimus Prime went into a video game to fight Megatron and got destroyed. Spoilers. Uh, the Protector Bots supported Prime all the way through that. And they also were involved in the Grimlock leadership debacle. Um, but really didn't do much. Especially Hotspot, for some reason. They always concentrated on the other ones rather than him. He was sort of just there. I'm guessing it's because, number one, they already had a fire truck in the form of uh, Inferno number two. He looked a bit like Optimus Prime. They kind of didn't want two Optimus Prime likes confusing the kids. Uh, and besides which, how do you make stories for, for the special teams? The problem is, and always has been with the special teams, is that most of their characters are kind of samey. And for some reason, Hasbro keeps going after the aerial bots as being great. They're not, they're dull as dishwater. They're not very interesting, to me at least. Um, and just their planes, how do you make planes interesting? I would have loved to have seen more about Blades and more about Groove and certainly more about Hotspot because he's a guy who loves his job. He really enjoys being in the thick of it, um, right where the action is, in the middle of the flames, in the middle of a battle. He, he thrives on it and he inspires everybody around him because he thrives on it. And he's just your general all-round good guy. Um, but because of that, I suppose, not very interesting. Doesn't have character flaws. So they didn't really do much with him. His finest moment, however, came uh, in G2. Hotspot was pretty much, as far as he was concerned, the last Autobot on Earth. And Cobra had uh, done a deal with Megatron for a new body. They built him a new body in exchange for lots of Transformer parts so they could create their own weapons themselves from Cybertronian technology. Um, Hotspot's job, as far as he was concerned, was to stop that convoy getting to where it was going, uh, which he did. He did help do that. He destroyed, uh, with the help of G.I. Joe, the convoys. Sadly, this weakened him and put him in pretty much stasis lock, and he knew that if he was captured by Cobra, then he would form the basis of that new weaponry and it couldn't have that so he did his duty and he uh, he self-destructed so he did the ultimate heroic sacrifice uh, for which Hotspot should be rightly remembered for but apart from that didn't do much else in the comics 
Uh, it's just a shame that he did do that massive heroic act. The problem is, even though I've always had a soft spot for Hotspot, um, I'm guessing that at the time, because I didn't really read Generation 2 when, I, when it was out, I'm guessing at the time it didn't actually mean much to anybody because they'd not done much with him in the first place. If you're going to sacrifice a character, uh, at least to have it be a character that means something to somebody, uh, at the time I doubt Hotspot did. However, as a Generation 1 toy, I loved Hotspot. Never had him myself. My mate Rob did. Uh, he had all the protector bots, actually. And Defensor, one of my favourite gestalts. I, I love that guy so much. He's so cool. Um, I would love them to do uh, a third party. Or even Hasbro, get on it. You've done Bruticus, do the rest of them now. But if a third party ever decides to do him, which they won't, you see. I say this every time I'm back to the 80s. Every week it's Devastator, Bruticus, or uh, the Predacons at the moment it is. But never the Predacon, uh, never um, the Protector Bots. Never Computron. Never a bobbiness. For God's sakes, guys, get on the case. Um, so you can imagine, uh, because I loved Hotspot quite a lot as a kid, I really wanted the toy, never got the toy. It's a blue fire truck. It's something you never see. It's sort of a powder blue fire truck. You never see these things. Um, you can imagine my surprise and excitement when I saw that these were coming out, sadly only in Asia. However, if you look on eBay, uh, you can get them from China for about £15 uh, with free shipping. It takes a while to get to you. It will take a month to get to you because it's coming from China on a container ship, for God's sakes. That's fine. If you can wait a month, you can get your hands on one of these for very, very cheap. I mean, it's pennies compared to what you'd expect to pay for this thing. Uh, if you look for the Inferno mold on uh, eBay or Amazon, you won't find it on Amazon. If you look for it on eBay, this mold of Inferno, the original toy, can go up to about 50, 60, 70 quid. Um, so 15 pounds for this guy who was an Asia exclusive, I don't think is too bad at all. Now they have used this mold quite extensively. As I said, it, originally it was Inferno. You also got Grapple out of the mold. This guy and uh, Botcon Pyro or Autobot Spark or whatever the hell he's called. Hi, I'm Autobot Spark. Um, that's one for Phil there. Hi, Phil. Um, yeah, so they haven't used it anymore, but there must be someone else that they can use it for. Um, there must be some more trucks out there that they can use that for. I'm trying to think now. Um, can't think of any really off the top of my head. I wouldn't mind seeing a version of Optimus Prime. Sort of R.I.D. Optimus Prime as this. It's a, that'd be pretty cool, right? He's a fire truck and that. That'd be pretty sweet. Um, never going to happen. But this guy, anyway, Hotspot, we'll have a look at him. He is, like I say, the standard Inferno mold. Uh, we've seen it all before. We love it. He's got the water cannon on the back. You can put the, um, I think it was the Gears of War, I think it was called, something like that. The uh, They did bring out a version of the Inferno fire truck ladder, third party. And you can fit it to that. Uh, they it wouldn't stop you at all I've, I've seen it with that um third party kit on there um i kind of like it as it is but i wouldn't mind having the ladder for it so if anybody does have that uh, and doesn't want it i i will pay um but so let me know i wouldn't mind seeing that i don't think you can get it anymore sadly or if you can and you know somebody uh who has a link let me know uh, but he does come with the standard water cannon on the back with the nice light piping uh, fiery shiny shooty shooty missile which does fiery shooty bang which is great uh, i'll just leave that there because that will come off in transformation it always does with me but um it's based on a pierce contender apparently although it is fictional it's not a real fire truck um but it does come in the standard powder blue again blue fire truck why i don't get it um if anybody knows why i'm sure it's just uh sort of a uh, design aspect that they wanted to go with rather than it being an actual fire truck in blue but there you go uh, he does have the nice fireball on the side because you know hot spot uh, which i love i love that i love the Autobot symbol on there as well i love the red of the sirens there it's not a full red it's sort of a, a pinkish red and you can see the, the, the sort of lights underneath it it's really strange and really cool, and I like it a lot. Um, the hubcaps are blue, 
again, great. They've really gone to town on the blue. The only thing wrong with mine, it's got a tiny little groove there, um, sort of like a battle scar that it came with, and I'm not too happy about that, but what are you gonna do? Send it back? The um, thing I like about this, it, it doesn't really show any robot mode on the underneath. I mean, you can clearly tell that they're his legs, but there's not too much there. It's similarly at the, at the top there. I would have maybe liked to panel across there so you didn't see the hands. But that's nitpicking. That really is nitpicking. Anyway, to transform this guy, well, it, there's numerous ways you can do it. The way I like to start off is take this panel and curl that there, do the same on the other side. That then makes the arms detach ever so slightly. You can then take these wheels and pop them underneath. Because then you can detach the legs and the legs will go into a leggy position, sort of a girwalk mode. We'll leave that for now. Next thing you want to do is undo the panels here, if you can, sort of loosen them, and then pull the arms apart, like so. Then you can put these wings up, like so as well, and then pull out the arms. Okay, so these things, you want to take the grey bit and fold that around like so and then take the uh, door there, fold that around then fold the whole thing, turn that around and pop it down. So rest on the back like that. And do the same for the other side. You just pop the grey thing in, pop that wing in, turn it around and fold it down and then you can fold the arms, bring them down, uh, you go like that way Take the water cannon, that goes there. So it's sort of an underslung weapon. Do the same on the other side. Now the legs, very simple. Pull them apart, turn them around at the knee. Do not turn the whole leg around. And there you basically have the legs. You will notice on the, on the back there, the legs kind of want to pivot. They want to be sort of pulled out like that. So he's doing the cock rock stance, you know? The bit of the Bon Jovi's. Uh, you then take this side, uh, this light bar and, oh no it isn't, yeah it is, that one, there you go, just pull that, do that again, push it and then the head comes up, we'll have a look at the head in a minute. You then have the back section, that folds up, what that basically does, it keeps the head stable, I'll show you, I'll pull that back. And you prop, or pop on the head and it's always moving. No matter what you do, you'll, you'll move it back. Pop the thing on the back and it's stable. It just, just the head moves, just the head moves. So, there we have, and it really is as simple as that. There we have Protectorbot Hotspot in his robot form. Now then, we'll go with the head first. I don't know if that is too close. But the head is great. It's a complete change from the Solar Song Grapple Inferno Pyro head. It's in very much its own thing. And it's amazing. I love it so much. Uh, no light piping on it, sadly. Even though there's a clear back to it. The back is clear. But there is no light piping. The eyes are painted on. But you can do the full range of motion. And you can go up and down. And it's, it's very, very nice and pretty. Um... You also need, sorry, last bit, the bumper there needs to go down as well. It doesn't really do anything. You can keep the bumper up if you want, but it sort of leaves his crotch showing, so it's probably best to have it down. Just keep the legs a little bit stable, but not. it doesn't need to be down at all. Um, the only qualms and the only thing wrong with this robot, it basically hasn't got a back. It's very, very thin uh, at the front. It could have done with maybe something else on the back there, but that would have maybe messed up the transformation quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't really make much difference, but uh, yeah, he's a good robot and he's, he's very, very nice and bendy. He's got lots and lots of joints to play with. He's got ankles that move. I mean, there is no excuse for ankles not to do this anymore. When you have a, re a, a robot like this, even his moving toes, for God's sake, you know, his toes move, for God's sake, which is cool and groovy and I like it. Uh, moves at the knees and he, he moves both ways at the knees like that and around uh, his arms good range of motion ratcheted joints 
Uh, sometimes wings can get in the way, but it's not too much of a problem. But really, this guy's got a, a damn good range of motion, and I love him to bits. Um, the character, like I say, didn't really get to do much, but they made a really friggin' awesome robot out of this. If you can get this guy, please, please do. You will not be disappointed. Uh, there is no version of this mould that is not good, because he's nice, he's big, he's chunky, there's nothing too intricate. He's a, a blast to transform. He really is a blast. It's a pleasure to transform this guy. Um, and he looks good at the end of it. You know, it is an easy transform, which a lot of people have commented on and said, you know, it's, it's one in the minus column. I don't see how, because to find a Voyager toy that can transform this easily is nice, because it means you can always play with that toy without having it to be a complete and utter ball bag. And of a character that's pretty cool as well and of a toy that was really colourful and it will stand out in your collection. Uh, I have it with the Wreckers at the moment uh, on my little Wreckers shelf and he stands out a mile. Uh, you know, he, he sort of, he pops against any other robot. So he's, he's well worth the £15 and the little bit of a weight you will have. Um, so yeah, get him, buy him, just buy the thing. Um, we'll leave it there for that. And we shall talk very, very briefly about Rollout Roll Call because that's that's a coming on October the 12th and 13th um, in Southampton. At the jury's in in Southampton. So please do come along. It's a Transformers and G.I. Joe Action Force uh, convention uh, organised by lots and lots of people, but mainly all the cool stuff. And if you go to the All the Cool Stuff website, which I shall put down below, um, Click on that and then you'll get the details. The tickets are going on sale next week and uh, some of the guests have already been announced. Uh, and a lot of them are the guys who make the toys that you play with uh, and also make the media that you watch and read. So you need to go to this thing. Uh, I'll be there, as will a lot of people, uh, but I'll be there representing Back to the 80s uh, and possibly doing interviews with people uh, who, who were there, which is really, really cool. Uh, by which I mean you guys. I will be going around with a piece of equipment called a Marantz, which is professional recording equipment, with a microphone going, Why are you here? And getting you to talk. So uh, I, I should also try and talk to some of the organisers, which would be very, very cool. But uh, yes, roll out roll call uh, in about a month's time. So start saving up, people. Uh, like I say, I'll put the website down below, so go and have a look and keep your eyes peeled next week. Like I say, tickets will be on sale. Uh, always nice to do a shout out for the old friend Dave Tree there from all the cool stuff. That's it for now. Um, one last bit of business. Uh, sad to hear that David Frost died, obviously uh, being of the 80s persuasion myself. Uh, this is the guy who um, invented uh, pretty much uh, TVAM, which is, you know, one of the main fixtures of the 80s. Without that, we wouldn't know about Transformers or GoBots or a lot of the geeky stuff that we uh, that we love now because Timmy Mallet from TVAM was one of the guys who promoted that on his Wackaday show. So, uh, a lot to be thankful for if you're a geek. Uh, and also Roland Rat and all that gubbins, um, which we all love, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, uh, rest in peace, David Frost. But uh, that's it from me now. Uh, stay tuned, maybe next week or maybe the week after for another video. Uh, don't know what it'll be yet, but I'm sure it'll be fun finding out. Take care of yourselves and each other. Dreadwind out.